start with the approval of uh, amended meeting agenda item. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, there are two agenda items I would like to uh, add. The first one would be uh, in consent agenda 11.6, approval of the 2018-19 school district calendar. And then uh, in section 12, announcements, I would like to add 12.2, uh, a thank you to Thunder Ranch. Okay. Do I have an approval to amend the board meeting agenda items for April 11, 2018 by adding items 11.6 and 12.2? I'll make the motion to approve it as presented or as amended. Do I have a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Let's see. Approval of minutes. I move to approve the minutes of March 14, 2018 as presented. Do I have a second? Yeah. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Correspondence? I have none, Madam Chair. Public comment? Okay. Uh, reports? 8.1 ASB report. Please introduce Bryce Carmine, ASB President, for this evening to give you the reports. I got kind of long one because I wasn't here last time. Since the end of winter sports, we have been busy preparing for spring. We have made walker signs for those who are participating in a spring sport. We also recognize our classified staff in early March with a variety of goodies. On Monday, they got muffins, Tuesday, Rice Krispie treats, Wednesday, gum, Thursday, crushed sodas, and Friday, a nice lunch brought by the rest of the staff. They also got kind notes throughout the week that they enjoyed. These past few weeks have also been, we have been working to sell school-wide Honker Pride t-shirts. We have been working with Barb Simpson and the Booster Club to order the shirts through her connections. We have been selling the shirts for $10 the past two weeks during lunch and plan to also have a booth during conferences tonight and tomorrow night to get more parents, students, and staff to get one. On March 6th, Student Council put on the Senior versus Staff basketball game. There were many participants, <coughs> especially for the seniors as well as many spectators in the stands. The seniors won. On March 7th, the Honor Society put on their annual dodgeball tournament which featured 19 teams from the community and school. They raised nearly $300 for future events and things they are doing later this spring. On March 8th, the Erie Cup speech finals took place in the library from second through fourth period. For the freshman, Kaylee Schneider won for her speech on the on movies. For sophomores, Deli Evans won with her portrayal as Pat Summit. And for the juniors, Jamie Farmer won on his speech about how schools need to teach more life skills. On March 9th through 11th, the leadership class had a retreat to Sun River, where we had team building activities and planned for upcoming events and student council elections. On March 12th, the junior class had a field trip to OIT for the Oregon <coughs> University System Tour. On March 13th, we had class meetings where we discussed upcoming events so that kids are aware of the coming month's activities. Our winter recognition assembly was Friday, March 16th, where a school-wide slideshow was played featuring recent sports and activities as well as awards for last semester. The seniors have been preparing for May activities like the Mother's Luncheon and Father's Breakfast and the logistics of graduation. This spring, our avid classes have been on several college trips. The 8th graders visit SOU, and the juniors and sophomores went on a longer trip to schools in Nevada and California. On March 21st, we had an SAT school day where 37 students took the test. Just today, 25 juniors and sophomores went on a career fair to Mazama High School. Next Monday, we are having an informational meeting for new student council members to try to encourage them to apply later this year. As we are now in the last quarter of the school year, the leadership students have been working to organize our new prize shirts and starting student council elections. A lot. There is. There's a lot. Thanks, Bryce. Yeah. Eight point two building principal reports. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Bryce took a few of mine. That's okay though. <laughs> um, so Lakeview High School enrollment is at two hundred and forty six students. DMS enrollment is at one hundred and six. Um, this year, um, we've just finished forecasting with our 7th to 11th graders at the middle school and high school. We used an online forecasting. Um, it was with the Registrar program that we registered our students with in August. 
parents were able to get on and take a look at the classes that the students chose by using their ID number, which is like their lunch number, and then a birth date. So it was easier access and um, notices went home to all parents so that they could look at that. Um, as Bryce mentioned, we started fourth quarter, so there's nine weeks left in the school year. Conferences are tonight in the cafeteria for middle school and high school, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. and tomorrow night. Um, in visiting with Ms. Counts, the state assessment is taking place and is in full swing. All is going well. It's very structured and plans for all students in all um, classes. For the um, ELA, juniors are wrapping up on, on their test. Seventh graders are halfway through and eighth grade um, just started this week. Juniors have completed their science um, state assessment. Eighth grade will take their science in the next two weeks. And then all grades are going to start their math um, state assessment on April 23rd. We um, have started the planning for summer school. We're going to um, offer <coughs> summer school again through the Step Up program. And um, it'll be credit retrieval for high school students so that that can help them with um, graduation requirements, eligibility for athletics. And um, we will go through a list of students. I'm going to go through that with Brandy. And then we will um, make contact with the kids and the parents so the parents know, as well as the kids, that that's available if kids have not passed a class. So that's all I have, Mr. Kate. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. I'd encourage you, if you're interested in elementary events, to look at our calendar because it is just packed. Um, a couple projects, I'm going to go through some dates with you in just a minute, but some projects that our staff have been working on, we're still working with Janice Heigl. We'll have one more month, possibly May as well. Working with her is our math consultant. She's K-12. She's working um, with our teachers. <coughs> we went through some observations. Then we went to her mom in the classroom, and the teachers were teaching, and she was critiquing. And then from that, we went to um, the teacher setting some goals with her. From there, we went to looking at assessments and comparing. Um, all the teachers at a grade level were asked to do, give the same assessment at the end of their modules. And then they were looking at how they were scoring them to create a little bit more continuity in how they were scoring them. For example, um, one kiddo might get have a, a, a test with 15 problems on it, and he may forget to put the labels on it and get an F on the test because out of three points, the label scores one of the three points. And so she worked with those teachers to look at um, grading those a little bit differently in that Yep, he doesn't have the labels, but he understands the concepts and maybe weighting of concepts and applications of the math concept heavier than some of the details. It, it's, it's a sickness that teachers suffer from. We, if we say we want labels, we want a name on paper, we want the labels, we want da 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 So kind of shifting that mindset. And then this time when she comes, they'll be working with um, a math series that we are thinking we're kind of toying with a little bit. We've never had in this district uh, a math uh, curriculum that was K-12. And for the first time, we found one that we really think is um, might fit the bill. Um, but it's only been on the market about two weeks. And the publishers did advance copies to us. So our teachers are just taking <coughs> a few of those lessons and teaching some of those. And they're going to talk to me about what, what direction they want to go with that. It's very similar to Engage New York as well with what they're already using. A little bit more user friendly. Um, we have a group of sixth graders that are participating with the Alger Angels and Miss Dixon in their production that will be May 23rd, which is pretty exciting. They practice during recess and then they have after school play practices. So we have some drama going on again with Miss Dixon, which is great. And this is a fundraiser and they're donating the proceeds from that to the Alger Angels. And we're working on trying to get some of our classes to go up there and uh, we have some enrichment dollars from ESB so that they can go watch a play, an actual production. Uh, with some kind of acoustics besides the Hey Jim, and uh, maybe make uh, a little bit of a donation back to them. And let's go through some dates. We have conferences uh, going on, and we're a little bit different than our kids are out tomorrow. We conference all day. Um, and then we are, we are going, we had three teachers go to Stearns Elementary in Klamath yesterday to do some observations and look at math and the English language arts. And that was at the suggestion of Janice Heidel, all paid for out of this House Bill 3499 grant. We'll be focusing that grant a little bit more um, at the elementary level on language arts. We're going to split our time between math and language arts. 
next year because our math scores really look decent. So we need to focus a little bit more on reading. Um, we have Teacher Appreciation Week. Janice Heigl will be here next week, Jan and then Teacher Appreciation Week is the very first week, week in May. And we have some fun things going on for that. Italian sodas are always a really popular day at the elementary school. We have um, a retirement celebration for Tammy Sims on the 25th of April. We'll be hosting an ugly flower arrangement contest. I know where I can get that. The retired teachers did something for Tammy and Mary oh, okay. at the gathering place off site, okay. but we've not really done anything at Hay oh, okay. for her because up until about this week, she's been popping in pretty regularly as she could from the greenhouse to just help out and, and kind of help with that transition. Um, we're doing our safety drills. We just finished one up at Union that the teachers ran, and I was just kind of a bystander. So this month, Liz uh, and Bonnie will be running them at Hay and Fremont. We're rerouting some of our traffic, if you will. Um, the teachers have come up with some different locked door situations and some rewriting of traffic uh, after our safety meeting the other day. Uh, sixth grade science fair is the first part of May, the second of May. Uh, <coughs> roundup, we're going to move to an evening, two evening sessions to accommodate our parents a little bit better to then during the day. We'd like to try some evening sessions, so we're going to do two hour long sessions on May the 3rd, and then uh, May 1st we'll do one at Union is tentative dates for that. And then if you really want to know all the field trips that we're taking and all the things we're doing, they're all on the calendar website. So we have a Google Calendar that's pretty up to date all the time for our teachers and our, and the public. Do you have questions for me? Thank you. Yeah, I talked with a little bit forward on that, so you know, I just had to go through and read it to you, but also write so. Madam Chair, can I make one comment? Secretary. Two minutes, and Bryce was here, but it's not about what the student just presented, but it's about the staff versus students uh, basketball game. Uh -huh. We should include the board members because I know Dustin can play pretty good. <laughs> well, they're not going to let the students win. That sounds like a great idea. Maybe next year. Dodgeball was sad. Those boys that won the dodgeball tournament needed some competition because yeah. outside of school they were bragging. And I'm like, you beat the seventh graders? You guys are 25, 26 year old guys. Give me a break. <laughs> Well, I do know when donkey basketball comes up, yeah. I know Darwin and I were in. I was hoping for another years. donkey basketball. I know, Those are so fun. Was... The 10th graders' uh, advisors are working on it. Gosh, are they? Know. They're trying to get participation on it. They basically have it this year. All right. Sorry, I digressed. Well, the report. Uh, it was the first meeting of its kind. We never tried one before, but with what has been brewing in, in public, in the national scene, the local scene, and everything else, we thought it necessary to address the concerns of the parents in public. Part of the meeting, I think there were a number of issues that parents really wanted to some questions answered on in regard to, you know, do we do drills? How do we do drills? Uh, do we have proper first aid supplies in the classrooms? Uh, what, what is the notification process if you do have an emergency? Uh, some issues also related to some school things at Lakeview High School as far as confidentiality and uh, you know notification in the you know when an event happens. You know like I think the Facebook thing has worked up a couple of times. Why didn't you notify us on this day or whatever? Well, sometimes the investigations that go in. A day or two before you know, you really can, in confidentiality, before you can really say anything or report anything to the public. So, those were kind of the laundry list of questions that were posed to me. Susan, uh, you know, received a lot of them too. What else did you do? You know, um. I think we pretty much did a good job of addressing everything in the meeting that night, or, trying, or attempting to address everything in the meeting that night. We went through an entire, we wrote a, about a four or five page script and went through yeah. the questions to address them. I mean, there were some of them that were out there about, like, why can't my kid, you know, do A? It had nothing to do with school safety, and those kind of went into a different category. But for the most part, I thought we went through them. 
<laughs> in a very comprehensive meeting, we started at 6 o'clock and that finally wrapped up at 9 o'clock. So it was a good, solid three-hour meeting. Questions were, you know, questions and concerns that were put forth by the public were addressed and answered. And uh, the one piece of this that just made me very proud was our community partners. The presence of our community partners that night was very impressive. Uh, from the Sheriff's Department to the LPD to uh, Oregon State Police to mental health to EMS, uh, ESD, um, you know, and uh, the juvenile department. And it was very impressive as far as the whole crew that showed up and they each had a part in the presentation. And I think we really provided some good comprehensive in information as far as our safety plans and what we're looking at down the road. Just to kind of give you a summary of, of what went on that night, and it's, it's in my right up here. The first piece of it was Susan and I discussing uh, the building safety, the drills that we do, that we rehearse. Chalice Young is here tonight, I'm very glad to see that. Uh, she and I have been looking at the high school safety protocols. We've gone through and revamped them. We've met with the staff on the early of these Wednesdays to discuss the high school protocols. We're retuning, fine tuning. And uh, the third week in April, we're going to go ahead and, and probably spend at least an hour or so doing all those safety drills. So I remember things that, uh, questions like the fire drills, we're, we're changing some things up on them. Uh, and uh, also the active shooter drills, we're changing some things up on that as well. I think the thing that hasn't happened in the last year or two is we haven't coordinated with law enforcement on our active shooter drills, and I, I fully intend to bring law enforcement into that. So we talked about, Susan and I talked about the drills that night, mainly Susan more than me, I have to give her credit, and also some issues, some anomalies with the buildings that we, we are concerned about, you know, in my current role right now, and her role as far as in her end, it's, it's basically that passing back and forth and those doors between Fremont and Hay during the day. <coughs> Just talk about that real fast. Well, some of the changes that um, we have made, or we've done some discussion, and some of our rerouting will happen next Monday. But the bathroom doors will be locked at all times except for recess, which takes a lot of time for our staff, for our little guys at Fremont. Those have always just been left open. They were locked in the past, but as of late, which means staff is going back and forth every recess, locking in and locking up kind of thing. The door that goes to the west is um, locked all the time for the kids, which you really have to be proactive about if you've got one going back and forth or stride in front of the building, because then they're locked outside and they have to go in the front, and that's not a safe situation either. Everything else is locked. Um, so teachers are trying to get in the habit of carrying their keys a little bit more consistently. Um, <coughs> we want to reroute lunch. Lots of kids go in those, those east doors there underneath the overhang at the Hay Jam. And it's just a really easy exit entrance point for somebody. And so we'll be rerouting that and doing some things a little bit differently with that. Some of our teachers will practice this week with the little guys just to kind of get it in the habit for next week. Um, I, I don't, you know, budgets always dictate what we can or can't do. We have had some discussion around um, buzzer systems for the cameras, like the jail has, or the front doors to let people in and out. Uh, union is kind of a different beast that way. Yeah. Happy to answer questions, though. I think on my end, um, you know, now that I've been there as long as I have, my, my greatest issue probably is, is the traffic flow between DMS and LHS, uh, especially on the north end of both those buildings. I think probably what we're going to have to look at is probably walking up the north doors on both those buildings and routing those kids around through the south east door on DMS and probably coming through the north or the south door on LHS, the main door. So how we're going to do that yet, I don't know. That's something I'm working on on that. But uh, you know, it's, a little, it's a little concerning to me, those doors on the, on the back end of both buildings that are unlocked and there's a lot of that traffic flow back and forth. So that's something you have to seriously, or I have to seriously consider as far as Lakeview High School is going to middle school. So, we did, Susan and I wrapped up our presentation. Sheriff Taylor had a great presentation. Uh, <coughs>
specifically talked about the response of the police departments, 911, and, and uh, what their goal as far as entering those buildings is going to be. It used to be, you know, great calm, great caution, but now, you know, as far as the police go, there is no great calm, there's no great caution. You're going in and you're taking out the threat immediately, which means you're killing the perpetrator. Okay. And part of that I've witnessed, you know, three, three of these trainings called DPSST, and the, the meaning of the acronym escapes me right now, but I'm meeting with Sheriff Taylor and also Deputy uh, Tag to, to schedule the next DPSST, which will be at Lakeview High School. And DPSST involves all the police forces, Thunder Ranch has been a contributing member in it, and EMS. Bobby's very good about going and getting, you know, uh, victims to come in, Boy Scouts, uh, her sports medicine kids to play victims, and it's, it's been a very productive thing as far as training our law enforcement. I had an issue at the high school well back, the response from law enforcement was pretty slow. I had a concern the other day, uh, last week, where I had to call in law enforcement, and it was amazing. All three branches were there in two minutes, heading through the door. And I, boy, I'll tell you, and they shook their hands and congratulated them on the response. 911 was spot on, and uh, I was very pleased with the response as far as our law enforcement agency were the other day when I, when I called them. So, fantastic. Uh, in addition, uh, Sheriff Taylor also, you know, discussed along with uh, Sergeant Scott Hill, the Ring State Police, and you hear a lot about it in the news since the Florida shooting. This is thing of staff members carrying weapons. I've reached out to St. Helens, which you know I uh, like to do <coughs> sometime in the work session the next more important meeting to talk about my findings on that, as well as Brian Wolf with Pace and OSBA and their uh, opinions as far as that goes. So I will share that. It's also going to be the conversation of meeting with all law enforcement agencies this Friday morning at 10 o'clock in, in this office uh, to continue to follow up in regard to this meeting, what we learned from this meeting, and to talk about these specific issues and to talk about our upcoming DPSST. So, so Sheriff Taylor had some thoughts on the concealed weapon thing, and you know, one thing he thought about was you know, the secured lock boxes of thumbprint identification to release the box, to release the weapon, to train, you know, specifically trained staff only. And that was, I'm not saying we're going to do that, I mean, but that was an idea that he raised at the meeting that night. So, he finished his presentation, we went to Bobby Stinninger. Bobby, of course, spoke as far as what the EMS response is going to be. Uh, EMS will set up a triage area in the building. As soon as they've neutralized the, the threat, uh, EMS flies into action. Basically, the, the police that are ahead of them take, you know, uh, code, color code cards to denote, you know, in their mind's eye, well, I hate to say it, who is deceased. Red card means immediate care, take care of this victim immediately, and so on and so forth. Then, of course, EMS has a big part of that triage scenario, too, when they come into the scene and take a look at it. Trace Wanzer from Lake County Mental Health. She was there. She discussed the response as far as mental health, as far as dealing with <coughs> families and, and providing mental health workers on the scene to give support to those folks. Sheriff Forrester, uh, the district attorney, she came in. Uh, I think the main thing she addressed was some of the, you know, the conversation going on, on Facebook, you know, in regard to uh, an incident that happened in the high school a couple of months ago and uh, some of the public stating that they wanted the name of the person or the student, you know, out it. And, of course, she explained, you know, in very specific detail that this is all very confidential information. She placed it in, in the context that, you know, if it were your child, would you want your child's name released? So confidentiality reigns supreme and needs to be observed for the protection of the child and the protection of the situation. So I thought she added a lot to the conversation. Uh, in addition, we had the juvenile department there. They talked about what their role is with students who are identified through, uh, you know, uh, juvenile misdemeanors, juvenile felonies, and, and what their uh, specific duties are 
I have to say I'm very impressed with the Lake County Juvenile Department. They've done just an outstanding job with, with working with some of our students in Lakeview High School and, and on a regular basis as far as guiding them in the right direction, helping them make good decisions, and hopefully uh, not move into any type of trouble again. And then we kind of wrapped up with that night uh, a compliment Superintendent Jack Thompson of Lake County ESD. He brought to our county this thing called threat assessment coordination. Uh, time and time again, uh, Susan and Brian really speak to it. You know, we have students, especially a kid who might walk up uh, first as well as first grade and in jest or joke might say, well, I'm going to kill you. And you have to, these days, you have to examine the level of intensity of that threat. Is it a real threat or were they just spouting off? So now we move into this thing where we have a level one, level two threat assessment thing. Ryan Tagg, who's with the Oregon State Police, he's been hired by the ESD to be the, th the threat assessment coordinator. Level one is the members of the staff, probably the student's teacher, administration, and counselors sitting down with this very long, detailed questionnaire going through item by item by item related to how we perceive you know, the attitude of the student, uh, the demeanor of the student, uh, looking at the threat itself, or do you, you see the threat as a credible threat, or is it a threat that was just a flippant remark, you know, as a very detailed scenario. If the administrative team deems that the threat moves beyond, you know, level one, then it jumps up to level two where uh, Officer Tag is involved, and, you know, it has moved into the zone where this is a student we need to really keep our eye on. This is a student we have great concerns about, and we've documented that. Lonnie, Lonnie's gone. Susan, do you have anything to add on that? We've been, we've been through a couple of them now as an administrative team and done them, so. But think about it as, a, as bridging the gap between our discipline, right? We have, because if we have a first grader or second grader that, that says those words, and there's no credible threat there, there's no means, there's no, you know, they're just acting out because they're frustrated. That's going to stay within our discipline realm. I'm going to call the parent, they're going to go in school suspension, and, and we're going to call it, you know, we're going to do some, some work. <coughs> but when we have a kiddo that we maybe have a past history with, that of violence or just being a pill, or really have some problems, or they've threatened any kind of self-harm, things like that, we have concerns, or they make a threat that, could be credible. I'm going to do this to a person with this weapon. Then it, we could, we would go past our discipline. They'd immediately be suspended. But in the past, all we've had past that is once we suspended them was a risk assessment, which is a full-blown psychological evaluation. The kids are out of school for two to three weeks, and we needed something to bridge that gap. So now, when we get a little past our discipline system, we can suspend them. We can sit down with this team and say. What's going on here? I mean, the kid just gets some really bad news and act out, and can we get back <coughs> in school in a day, suspend him for a day, get him right back in school without this full-blown risk, assess risk assessment done by a licensed psychologist? So, but I hope that is a little bit of clarity for you in the process. Kind of walking out of there, and the points of <coughs> moving forward, we'll go to this you know, uh, group that I have formed with law enforcement, everybody. You know, the key points that were. You know, looking at and discussing and coming up with some clarity on our, you know, we'll, we'll continue the meetings between ourselves and community partners as far as discussing safety plans, uh, these DPSST trainings, and having dialogue in, in regard to other issues related to school safety. We're going to continue the investigation and discussion on, on the issue of Army staff members. We will be addressing the buildings. We're going to review the safety quarters, entry points into the buildings, and possibly rethink the student traffic patterns. We're going to review and constantly encourage the active shooter drills in each building and conduct drills in coordination with law enforcement. We will collaborate, collaborate and continue to schedule DS, DPSST trainings with law enforcement and EMS. And then the last thing, by the end of the 2017-18 school year, and uh, this is going to be a, another agenda item this evening, recognizing a specific group and organization. Every room in the district will contain emergency medical bags and tourniquets. And we've already, that one, we've already, through uh, early, at least Wednesday, we uh, issued the bags at Lincoln High School. In Denver, so I think we believe she's got to get down to your building. Bobby, I tried to hurt this and uh, pass the bags out down there. So every room, every office, every uh, 
a single uh, entity in this building will have these emergency first aid bags in every location. Questions? Dustin, you were there that night. Did you have any takeaways? The only thing I would say is that it was a good meeting. It was a really good meeting. The pre meeting with the partners, plus the meeting itself. Um, good discussion, mm -hmm. a lot of different perspectives. And I think we're going to continue that. Thank you. Questions, board members? Was the train, I, was it not on the tourniquets already? No, the tourniquet thing is not included in our regular first day training. And uh, the last week, Thurlin Lease, we handed out the first aid packets and we also did the tourniquet training that day as well. Um, with Thunder Ranch, there are members of Thunder Ranch uh, helping us train in that regard. So, like I said, we've got to cover all the elementary schools next as far as the packets and the tourniquet training. So, anyway. This is a pretty large, complex issue, school safety. Yeah, so, 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 so I think, you know, there's a, lot, there's a fair amount of low-hanging fruit. First aid bags, tourniquets. But then there's also some pretty large stuff that's going to take the time. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You bet. Any other questions? I thought it went some more. I'm not going to go to the next year, too. I think it's good to keep the public aware of on this. Uh, <coughs> I think there's uh, only positives can come from. So, one thing with the school safety between um, Fremont and Bay Mill, or uh, ADA, I know we closed the road and all that. Is there any discussion that we maybe want to have with the town about potentially closing that permanently? I would love to do that. So, so as a town council, I'd also. Uh, for a moment and say, it, it, when it comes down to safety, I'd be willing to have that discussion and see if it's possible. The only thing I can see that might be a drawback is just with the hospital location, you know, that being a problem, but, you know, people get used to it uh, as well as emergency service and maybe some stop signage changes a little bit if needed. And so something I would love could, to do that, yeah. Darwin, in that I, just this week I had a parent that came from the south through the north, went through the barricades. We replaced them multiple times. They've been, you know, hit um, at different times. I had a, a, a lady that parked so close to him um, a couple of years ago. Kids were crossing, and she ran over the barricade and hopefully not a kid. Um, but it's pretty regular that somebody runs them. And I would love to, to close that on a more permanent basis. And we'll, we'll try to keep that one way, and that, that was discussed once, is, well, it doesn't really need to be during the summer and other things like that, but, you know, we, we should be able to kind of come to a better consensus and then solution. Uh, I think you put pipe in the middle of the street, and then you have metal arms, just like to go to the back of hay exactly. that were closed and wanted so to open still during the day. So you can use it for the buses there. Right, so you can use it for the buses, and then the other two, because if they can't get through, they don't drive down there near as often. You have parents still that will, you know, come down occasionally confused because they see teachers' cars down there. But it, it would help um, my peace of mind a lot. It would help my secretaries because I'm not chasing cars and getting... We've had a little bug lately that is going through there quite a bit. And we finally got license plate. And, and well, I don't want to lose the parking aspect at all. But yeah, these gates and, you know, closing up you know, with a more secure barricade. Yeah, and... If we close permanently, um, I'd just be happy to have the town, you know, be okay with a more permanent structure in there mm -hmm. that we could put in besides just the better cake. And, and even if it was open during the summer, it was, you know, something where you could pull pipes out and something like that. I thought you look at signs and put in the one way and doing it out. <coughs> It isn't technically posted. Is it? it is not. It is a courtesy because we don't. Right. We did not have an agreement with the city originally to do that. Mm -hmm. That was not something that was, um, was going to happen because of the signing. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'd be happy to start that process. I'm not exactly sure where to start that process, but. These guys, the discussion with these guys yeah, to see exactly how we wanted to do what we wanted to do. If you as far as run road with it. Yeah, just sit down and chat about it. You can get on our agenda pretty easily, and then, and then, but you know, 
come to a work session first and we can at least keep the conversation going. Okay. Appreciate that, Darwin. Yeah. Okay. 8.4, February 2024. <coughs> okay. Uh, let's start with the uh, revenue side. Um, in February, uh, collected a, a little bit less taxes than what we had anticipated, and the interest uh, was less than what we had anticipated. Of course, keep in mind those are, these estimates are always an average over the past, oh, I think I take about the last five years or so um, as to what I get per month, so it varies from time to time. Um, our interest, <coughs> of course, the interest rates, um, the 4000 is is from the LGIP state pool, um, and that interest rate has keeps steadily going up. Um, today, I think I opened up March's statement, and it went up 1.92%. So it's quite a bit comparatively from where we started um, a while back, which was um, 0.2, <laughs> felt like. Um, so that's helping out quite a bit there. State school fund, it is what it is. Um, fingerprint fees come out of there. Under the state other column, where there's 25946 that is also a state, um, from the state, uh, common school fund, that's our second payment that we get every year, July um, and um, January. It was a little bit late this year. Um, they do some reconciling and that sort of thing. So it ran just a little bit late. Um, however, we did get it in February. Uh, and the nothing in the federal column. Other for the 31000 um, most of that is considerably, roughly about 29000 The ESD reimburses us for our spec ed teacher, uh, for one of our spec ed teachers. Uh, and so that was September to January billing. Um, I bill them on a regular basis after the first of the year. It just seems like the first of the year we're always swamped with all kinds of billing. So that's a lump sum payment um, inclusive of September to January. And then the tuition, um, I, I had gotten quite a bit of the tuition in, in January. Um, Adele was a little bit uh, behind there and we didn't get it till February. So uh, that was uh, for Adele's piece. The ESD counselor, 81,000. Again, um, that's ca uh, one FTE of counselors. So we don't, um, it, we split it between the high school and the elementary school. I do a 0.5 and a 0.5 from each place and bill them, uh, the ESD that is, um, for the counselors. And then they also reimburse us 0.5 FTE on the tech position, um, part of all of that agreement that we um, had. What was it, the last meeting when Jack was here? Um, so those are July to January <coughs> for those positions. The spec ed, or excuse me, the, the tech position is on starting in, in July every year. So that's a catch up there. Um, and then we get that on a pretty regular basis every week um, as we go through. Um, overall, we made a few tracks there. We collected more um, than we anticipated. Uh, about 71,000. So we made some tracks from the 299,000 that we are negative on. We're actually now at 228,000. Um, to make up for that on the expenditure side, we're to the good about 263,000 below budget. So so we're making some tracks. Um, I've kind of cut everybody out from spending unless they need it uh, for their classroom or some sort of piece of their education. Um, piece and then there was some trips that are out there that get reimbursed and there's also other grants that are running through the general fund. We've got some outdoor school stuff um, that we got some grant money on that. That's running through the the general fund. But if if we can do without, we're doing without at this point. Um, our payroll in the month of February was less than we anticipated. That's always a good thing. And our accounts payable, you can see where they, they've been cutting back on that. So 263000 to the good in the expenditures. And uh, so then um, our, my ending fund balance in February was $2.9 million. I'm anticipating June to be about 880000 which is a little bit more than um, we started with. Remember, our, our beginning fund balance this year is 765000 
um, and that was to do a lot to, to do with, um, we had some title grants that didn't fully cover, so general fund covered the rest of those grant dollars, making it for the salaries that we had. So we're making a little bit of tracks. Um, I'd like to see that ending carryover being closer to a million, um, but we'll, we'll get back to that um, uh, eventually. It takes time to rebuild that. Old business? I have none. New business, 10.1, 2017-18, horticulture, floral design, field trip. Please to welcome uh, Mrs. Bauer here this evening to present a uh, request for her annual horticulture, floral design, field trip. So we are planning on taking our field trip May 14, 15, and 16. And we're kind of up again in the Salem, uh, Woodburn, area. Um, this year uh, we only have one um, location that's going to be the same as last year and I do have a mention that So this year instead of um, Oregon State we're going to go to Clackamas Community College I think with the group of students I have this year that'll be a good fit for them and Clackamas Community College I've been really impressed we're doing some dual credit articulation with them but they're really really hands-on um, and they are really excited to host our students and are going to try to get them into a class, spend part of the afternoon in a college class, and um, do some hands-on things and then tour us around the campus uh, to see some parts besides just the horticulture program. But uh, the kids are pretty excited about that. I have a couple kids that were already kind of thinking about going that direction into horticulture, so um, I think that will be a really good tour for them. And then uh, this year, because we're going a bit later, last year we went to the tulip farms, but this year tulips will be done. So we're going to go to the iris gardens. And I didn't even realize Oregon, I guess, is the top producer of iris bulbs. So um, that will be, I think, kind of interesting to see. They have a big flower show going on when we'll be there. And then um, Alpha Nursery um, does roses, perennials, uh, trees. They've got some uh, satellite radio controlled technology for like retractable greenhouse roofs. So I think it will be kind of interesting to see. Um, Fessler's was the one location we went to last year. They're pretty automated and have a, a pretty high employee rate and they, they pr make their own soil. Um, they do a lot of tropical and foliage plants too, which are interesting. And they're a breeding site for some of the um, animals. Uh, still working on one tour. I'm working with some of my sales reps. They have a couple feelers out for me for that afternoon tour. It's a little tricky because most of the nursery people like to get up early and get out early. So they're working <coughs> on some things for me. Um, I'm really excited about Wednesday. We're going to go to uh, microplant nurseries and they do all tissue culture. And they say they do about a million plants a year from tissue culture. So that's the test tube growing and the kids are pretty fascinated by those different technologies. And then Oregon Flowers Inc., we tried to go there last year. They were meeting with their bulb, um, their bulb growers last year, uh, but they grow cut flowers and ship them all over and they kind of go with a European style and bring a lot of their equipment from Europe. So I think that will be really interesting for the kids. Uh, so that's kind of our field trip. and. Uh, hopefully we'll expose the kids to some secondary education and some different career opportunities for them as well so they can see a little bit beyond what we do just here in Lakefield. How many kids are going to participate in the field trip? Right now I have about 12 to 15. I have a few kids that are kind of iffy because it does fall close to track state. So I have a few that are anticipating being really fast or jumping really <laughs> far and maybe making it, but um, I did this year, which lowered a few kids that I'm taking, but I think that it's a good thing. I did have them write an essay on why they wanted to go and what they think they'll get out of the field trip, what, why they wanted to go, because I have a little bit different group than I did last year, um, not quite as motivated. And, in fact, they've said to me, like, we signed up for horticulture because we thought we got paid for planting flowers. <laughs> so, 
Uh, so I thought having an essay so they kind of think about what they really want to get out of it. You know, it's three days with them. I don't want to take kids that are just going to be there to, to mess around and not represent like you well. So I did have a few kids that said, we don't want to write an essay. That's too much work for us. So I think I have hopefully a group that really is going to get something out of it that goes. Any other questions? On the sideline, when's the plant sale? Mother's Day weekend. Um, <coughs> so that Friday, Saturday from 9 to 4. We do have some early stuff that we are uh, able to get out, taking down to bloomers and selling for the kids from down there, some pansies and early baskets. So if you guys want some pansies and early baskets, we've got those ready to go. Um, so yeah, we have any time you guys want to come over and check out what we've got going on in the greenhouse. It's second period. We're oh, looking we're for someone to get up on a ladder and fix a place for a baseball in there. Oh, I did that. Yeah. Yeah. Last night, I think. And I saw another place that's cracked. I'll have to oh, oh, mail Joe and see. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like another baseball. So great. Okay. The kids tried to tell me it for sure was St. Mary's. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, on that, uh, she, she obviously needs hotel rooms and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. but um, we've got enrichment funds with the ESD, and so I've earmarked uh, those enrichment funds to cover her, her um, hotel rooms, our driver um, and, and bus and that sort of thing. This is an educational um, situation, so that is reimbursed 70% by the state, so, um, so we feel pretty confident that, that um, you know, this will be beneficial to the kids um, to get to go on, on trips since I'm talking about money. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Motion. I move to approve the 2017 18 horticultural floral design trip as presented. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Let's see, 10.2, 2017-18 math field trips. So as you guys know, last year was our first year doing the math trip without knowing it. And usually most of the funding came from just their kids and they did fundraising and did all that stuff. Last year we used a lot of uh, <coughs> memorial dollar fund and stuff like that to help with the reimbursement and cut the cost for our kids. We graciously had the donation from the NHS from their fun run, or not fun run, memorial run that they did and everything in her honor in early June last year. And so they have donated $2,500, I believe, got shipped over that Emma, I think. Emma's got it. Yeah, I think Emma moved over and stuff for us into that account. And each year that that's what their plan was. And so we're still going to have the kids pay. We did $95 last year. We're going to do 95 again to help some of that cost so that they have a little bit of buy into the trip. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of buy-in from them, help cover some of the meals and stuff, so that they cover some of those meals, some of their own expenditures and things like that. So that they, when they go, they know that they're going for a reason. And then the rest of that stuff has been coming from the NHS, and we're hoping to let that fund build up a little bit more and more each year to kind of keep it sustainable. So we're trying not to empty it year after year. We're trying to leave it. And last year I tried to leave, I believe, $1,500 or so in there. So once again, trying to just use a, as much of a minimum as we can to let that thing build up to the point where if there is that kid that really, really can't pay, we will make sure that there's always money for somebody to go. Um, but it is our <coughs> next trip. We're going to visit Oregon State. A guy named um, Sam Stern has been doing a bunch of research on our daily fund and Collins McDonald fund. And he has come down, he's talked to former students from clear across the country who have been on those scholarships and who have done amazing things from those scholarships. And so he took us last year to go visit the president of the university, sat us down in the boardroom up at the very top level there where we could see everything. He brought in heads of the department from biology, from math to talk to us. So the kids got a chance to very much experience some of the or what Oregon State had to offer and what some of these scholarships do for us if they maintain the grades and where they're going with their math and science. And so we did that. We'll be at the University of Portland. We have a good connection through one of the professors there, the head of the math department, to talk to us there at the university. 
Um, then we will talk to a bunch, and that would be on the Thursday on our way up. And then on Friday, we spend most of our time in the downtown Portland area on the east and west side visiting architects, um, actuaries. Uh, we will visit uh, stockbrokers, forensic accountants. Okay, we will visit a plethora of very, ha very heavy math type occupations that most of the time the kids don't get a chance to dive into here and stuff like that. And so they'll be in the skyscrapers in downtown and get a chance to visit with a lot of those people in the area. I had some guys, because I was a little late getting on um, some of the calls, they called me up and they said, hey, when are your kids coming through? We can't wait. We look forward to it. So I had several of them get hold of me even before I had a chance to get hold of them, wondering what dates when we can sit down with them. So our kids left a good impression with a lot of them. And so we would like to continue that. And our group this year should be a little bit larger than last year. Should be closer to 15 to 20 students in there, depending on which ones have to opt out for various reasons. Some it's other trips, other things that get in the way. But we should be looking at a minimum probably of 15 all the way up to 19 if everybody gets a chance to make it. And that's uh, the 10th and the 11th coming home on the 12th on a Saturday. <coughs> Because we'll be there, we'll usually go till about five or so at night, visiting various people around. So it's a full day on Friday and full day on Thursday. Schedule. It's a very yeah. tight schedule because you're in downtown, so the bus drops you off and we walk. You know, it's not worth right, so you walk them through downtown and and oh, and I wanted to just mention also, Mrs. Hall has graciously volunteered to be our female chaperone and stuff like that, so the kids are feeling very comfortable with the fact that they have two people that they know very well and stuff going with them. So they're real excited about that. Once again, I guess that's, it was approved sort of earlier and stuff, but that essentially Mrs. Hall would miss that Friday. But at the same time, it would be, I guess, essentially paying her for that Friday to volunteer for us a little bit because she would miss her day at school on that Friday and th Thursday and Friday, but that would be up to you guys to allow that to happen. Um, I think after that, all we're really asking for is transportation and essentially some cost for myself and her. So, can so you get money for some of this education? <laughs> I'm not going to give any SD money. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so, again, this is educational, not sports related trips where we don't get uh, reimbursed. So, 70% will come back to us on the transportation. So, that that to me is fine, not a, not a big deal. Sub costs, they're just not what they are. <laughs> just roll with them. And actually, uh, Mrs. Hall would not have a sub that day. Right, yeah, so she'd just be covering just be her, her, cover yeah. her salary for the day. Her salaries for the for those days. <coughs> yeah. And then, then you would And I would need <coughs> And that depends. It could be in house, it could be covered by um, other teachers in there, um, and or if there's a sub available that will come in all day both days. So right. I move to approve the 2017-18 math field trip is presented. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mark. Mark has had a question for you. Oh, absolutely. I'm curious if you've looked into any places that would be, uh, not necessarily this year, obviously you've got a plan but like agricultural based or uh, natural resource based? So the, the, one that, the one that we used to go to, which I thought was good for him, is we used to go to the firefighter up there in Portland that did the weather, the, the National Weather Service fire for our BLM and Forest Service. And this year he said his schedule was completely filled up on the days that we were available. And so he apologized, but he said, please get hold of me again. And so that was one of the ones that we really focused on to give those kids that were thinking of a track, something like that, that might be a BLM, Forest Service, firefighter going that direction and stuff for some of those kids. And so we could also work in some more ag stuff, especially given the seed farming that takes place up north. So it could be something on our way up, on our way through Oregon State, up there that first day if we wanted to stop somewhere and hit an agricultural center and stuff and say, look, what do you guys have for math and science for our kids? 
Yeah, I just think it'd be good. I mean, no, absolutely. A lot of kids in this community that probably don't want to spend their career in a skyscraper in Portland. Right, right. And it was one of the ideas was just to get them out though, and at least let them see what other offerings beyond that. But absolutely, we can, especially some of those once again bigger agricultural farms on your way up through Salem that you see that do those turf and those lawns and all that stuff there. If they took us into their math and their science portion of it as to what those kids would need for a background. Absolutely, we can we can put that on as possible docket and stuff. I'll make a notation for next year to to maybe start to include some of that stuff. If we can find and if somebody has if somebody has connections like that, all the time stuff like this pops up where one group can't do it one year because of meetings or whatever they have for their own trainings and days and they can't do it and so we try to fill in where we can with with some others and stuff. So I just take Noni's list and I've kind of been mishing and mashing up and getting hold of people that couldn't do it last year and can do it this year and, and things like that. So we'll take any connections people have to get these kids some more here's what advanced math can do for you. You people that are on this track to go through calculus, don't brush it away like you don't expect to use it. Let's see what's out there. Yeah, I wonder if even something local like Collins at their mill and mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a lot of Oh very yeah, yeah. No, like a like a Greg Lar you know, like Greg Larson and stuff, he'll tell you that he's well, gonna use that. Well the other thing that we might be able to find and if you're going to Boise I could find it really easy. But it may be that you can find somebody that is involved in ag and basically they're looking at the market and doing the futures. Right, the futures market would be huge for analyzing, us. Analyzing, you know, their costs of input. And it could mm -hmm. maybe even be something that works at a dairy. Right, well, and very similar to like a, a broker and right. everything. You know, all those people that are doing that, that stock market brokering probably have a, an ag broker that does a lot of the futures right. for them and stuff like that. that we can work into that process. <coughs> you know, my son works for Coleman Farms, one of the largest farming organizations up in the valley up there. And I, could, I could probably get you in contact through him. Absolutely. We'll take, once again, we'll take whatever contacts we have to just make the, make the trip as much of an enriching thing of what's out there, what the possibilities are for these kids that go down this track. And I, and I think there should be some that are interested in skyscrapers, too. Yes. But yeah, like the architect that we saw last year was amazing for the kids. They just didn't even expect, and it was uh, it was quite, kind of an eye opener for them. They expected some stuffy suit architect, and this was a very relaxed. It'd be like if you've ever seen like those new campuses where people just lounge around. It was quite the quite the intera interesting interaction. Silicon Valley. Yeah, a very Silicon Valley type thing. No yeah. walls. Everybody was at each other's computer. Like it was quite the yeah. quite the dynamic 25. up there at the architecture yeah. <laughs> place. But anyway, it was it's a fun trip for the kids. And I would just like to make sure that we we keep it going and stuff. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We did. We just had more questions. 2018-19 budget calendar, 10.3. Okay, so um, I put I put together a calendar. Um, basically, it has everything on here that that needs to happen for the budget. Um, specifically, though, your your May 22nd, I would like to have the first budget meeting here. Um, we would pretty much hit Fund 100. Um, and, and anything major, but usually we'll see if you're funding 100. Uh, May 29th would be the rest of the funds um, specifically. And then I put May 30th on only as if needed. Generally, we get through two, um, get through them within two meetings. Um, and so I don't anticipate a third day, but now yeah, we better plan for it just in case. Um, and then the rest of it is, is my deadlines as far as budget hearing would be on the on June 13th um, and then I can get all of my copies into the state and um, etc. Okay. I guess I'm asking for approval for these dates. Simple type on May 30th is Wednesday. Oh yeah, two Tuesdays. What did you say? You have Tuesday the 29th and Tuesday the 30th. Um, oh yeah. 
actually bid on the project, um, advertised it, I sent out three bid packets, got back two. Um, Rocky Mountain Construction was the low bidder at $117,257.50. The other was out of Altrus at Eagle Peak, and they were roughly $30,000 more. My expectation would be that they were going to have to buy the asphalt from um, Rocky Mountain Construction because they're already over here for other construction projects already set up. Um, so. Um, our, our anticipation, uh, school gets out on June 8th. Um, I just got off the phone with them today, kind of setting up tentative dates as, as they're busy, also county and Rocky Mountain. County wants to come in the 11th and 12th when there's no school, or no kids um, at the school, obviously, so we can um, remove all the asphalt. And then soon after that, whether that be the 13th or that following Monday, Rocky Mountain will come in and we pay for us. So I guess I'm asking for the final acceptance of 117000 <coughs> To approve the asphalt RFP 001-2018 acceptance is presented. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion for Point five, OSEA negotiation team established. Okay, so two things here. They've asked to open. Um, they're open for salary or wages and, and um, language. I believe they are only asking at this point in time for just uh, wages. Uh, yeah, negotiate wages and insurance for the upcoming school school year eighteen nineteen. Um, I would anticipate that they're going to open language separately. Um, but what I need to do is is actually have, um, we generally have superintendent, myself, um, and of course there are three uh, representatives, usually it's three. And so I was hoping to get two board members to join on for the negotiation team. So I'm asking to open <laughs> and I'm asking for two board members. That we have no dates set at this point. And that's what I was wondering. Is yeah, we don't have any. Really no dates are set. Do you have like a sort of time frame? They will like it's going to be in May or it's going to be in June or? No, I would anticipate. She's have. Is she? What day is her meeting? Um, it's on my desk, April 25th. Okay, okay so, so if, in there. so if it's, she's got a OSEA uh, union meeting, April. Around the end of April. It's, yeah, it's coming up. Um, I would anticipate probably May. And generally, these go pretty fairly easy knock on board. They usually send me um, what they would like to look at a, a range, say 1% to 2 or something like that, with caps 50 to 100 um, type situations. We kind of know as we go in where they might be landing out where we need to land out um, 
meetings. So relatively, I think yeah, less than maybe two meetings, maybe mm -hmm. on wages. Yeah, maybe something like that. Um, and again, language though takes a little bit longer, um, and they'll be they'll they'll open for language this year. So it could that that piece of it could run into June. I would volunteer years ago. <laughs> I mean, if you really want it. Well, I think she needs two of us. I do, actually. Maybe, maybe Barry wants to do it. Well, I don't, I don't care. I don't mind doing it. I'm just gone the first week of May, and with high school rodeos, I'm gone every Friday of May. I can it trust you. It will be not be on a Friday. It's not the first <laughs> week of May, and it's not a Friday. I'm probably good. And I, we do kind of take a pretty good consensus. <coughs> we throw out four or five dates, what works for everybody, um, and everybody on an email <coughs> chain. <coughs> and then the only other potential problem I would have is that last week of school, and that's only if it starts for open better. It'll be a high school finals. Well, the last week of school is a disaster for those ladies, so. Probably rest assured it won't be that week either. All right, so those are my only problems. <laughs> uh, and and they they may they may um, send me a letter from language relatively quickly. And if they do that 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 piece of it takes a little bit of time just walking through, depending on how much they want to change or don't change or what you know that sort of thing. So so really we may not go into June. Just kind of depends. Okay, that's fine. Those would be my only. So are you oh, stepping to the plate? Oh, I guess. Why not? Okay. And Dustin, did I hear mm -hmm. you correctly? You were stepping on it? No, I can't. Small teams to help them. <laughs> 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 no, no, I can't. Yeah. 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 I move to approve the established board negotiation team for 2018-19 negotiations with OCEA. The board negotiation team will include Dustin Gus Davidson, board member, and Corey Price, board member, superintendent, and business manager. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Consent agenda. Just need a motion here. I move to approve the consent agenda as with the. Oh, with the. Okay. With the additional what we said. So as amended, we'll cover that. Do I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Announcements. So, uh, coming out of the DA's office, we have a little boost to our 80. Playground fund um, in the amount of ten thousand. Um, Mr. Holland had a client that um, that needed needed to make a donation, <laughs> um, and so um, they they the only request that they had was pressing school construction project, which um, we found that the eighty hay playground, um, even though it was bid at a hundred and seventeen thousand, excuse me. Um, we were we're still a little bit short, um, so the ten thousand gives us a little bit of boost. Um, so we have applied it, designated it towards towards the ADV playground, and we would like to thank. Um, I think Mr. Helen worked pretty hard on on getting it to come towards the school district for us. <coughs> so thanks to the DA too. Yes. yes. I'm glad to see that the DA is continuing with that process of sending money this direction because initially she was not very favorable of that. The tide seems to have turned on that. That's very good for us. Mm -hmm. Should we get together a card for the next meeting and sign it? I'm sending a th thank you card if you'd like to. I can be happy to have the board sign it or put also a thank you from the board. Whatever you'd like me to do on that. Yeah, on behalf of the board as well. Yes. Okay, I think that's fine. Okay. Sounds good. The leadership is in here. So thank you to Mr. Holm and to the DA as well. They want to be Okay. Very good. Um, 12.2. 
Well, one of the things that came out of the public safety meeting that night was the discussion around uh, tourniquets. And I didn't realize that the tourniquets have become you know, an item of expense to you know, upwards of $30 per tourniquet. And of course, we didn't have any budget for tourniquets this year. Bobby was talking to Clint and Heidi Smith, the owners of Thunder Ranch, in the back of the room that night. And Bobby's hand came up, and as we were discussing that, and Bobby said, I'd like to make an announcement. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith are very happy to donate tourniquets that will go into every room in the school district, and also to do the training, too. So, my announcement is, is a special thank you to Clinton Heidi Smith of Thunder Ranch for their kind donation of these tourniquets, in addition to the training they've been providing as well. So, uh, my greatest amount of appreciation to them, and thanks to them for supporting our schools. And didn't they contribute uh, a fire extinguisher as well? That was two years ago they did, yeah. So, <coughs> so my thanks to them. Uh, another letter as well? Card? Probably. Yeah, be happy to, and, and okay. also um, thanks from the board as well. Sounds good. Uh, gosh, I think we're, we're there. Next board meeting agenda items. Well, to we'll start off the be work session, OSBA has you know, ran out some more policies, so we'll do some shocking. policy updates, and uh, I'd like to also, I'm going to surprise Tandy here, but so be it. A <laughs> work session in regard to uh, arming staff. Mr. Hedlund will be here uh, to help discuss that piece, and I'll also have those updates from St. Helens School District and also from ACE and OSBA to enlighten the board in that regard. Uh, Ms. Young, She's here this evening. Maybe she'll return again. We'll talk the Washington, D.C. trip volunteer chaperones. Uh, we're in the process of uh, the selection committee working on getting the vice principal AD position filled. We've had two meetings and we'll probably be conducting interviews. So my hope is to bring a, a consent agenda item hiring a new VP AD. Uh, third grade classes. Mrs. Warren, you want to elaborate on the robotics piece? Oh, it's a partnership um, with the extension instead of the doing the Agnew classroom with the 4 H extension office this year. They have a robotics program going and they have some really cool little robotics. They do that at Union as well in several of the classrooms in town. And they'd like to come and show you guys what they're doing. Um, working very hard on new teacher hires, so I hope to have some new teacher hires in the consent agenda for you as well. And then Mrs. Chavez will do her annual graduation discussion determining which board members will be on the stage that day to do a welcome and also when we engage board members in handing out diplomas. So uh, we will discuss that and make that decision that night as well. That's all I have. Okay. I move we adjourn the meeting. Hey. All those in favor? Aye. Thanks, board.